Thanks for coming out. Uh, if you found this through Small Business Week, that's great. Um, and if you don't know anything about us yet, um, Doherty Art Center is part of the city of Austin. Um, we're a city run and city uh, funded arts center. Um, and we have a artist resource center um, that's a physical space within the building and then also provides programming. So um, we do these monthly workshops, um, professional development, development workshops for artists for free. Um, and then we have paid six week classes as well. Um, and then we also have a residency program. Um, but anyway, so the professional development workshops tend to focus on skills that artists need to succeed as a, a business um, or making money or, um, you know, all the things that you need to do that a lot of people don't learn either through school or through other programs or classes or doing it on their own. So uh, we want to give people those tools. Um, my name is Sarah German. I am the education outreach coordinator for the Doherty Arts Center. Um, I have been there eight years and um, I have also been a uh, practicing uh, ceramic artist. I make functional pottery um, for 15 years. Um, and so I I go around and I sell my work through galleries and festivals and online. So um, just that to let you know that um, I use this as well. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and in the chat real quick, um, we, so the Artist Resource Center has a webpage um, and you can find a lot of our past workshop topics. Um, and it'll, a lot of them will either have the, the presentation slides or obviously since we've started doing these on Zooms, a lot, a lot of them have now uh, recordings as well to go with them. So you can go back. I'm gonna reference a lot of topics tonight that we just simply do not have the time uh, to go into detail on. Um, and we do have some of those topics um, as previous workshops. Um, so I am, I am putting that in the chat along with a link to a survey. Um, it's a quick survey. If you need to leave early or we get to the end of this, I will remind you again. Um, again, we're city funded, so we need all the feedback we can get. It helps support um, and show people that, or show uh, council that people are appreciating this and uh, continue to fund us. So, um, Anyway, I am going to go ahead and get started. So let me get over here. All right. So why do, we, why do I need a business plan? I am an artist, right? Um, so I know it's cheesy, but until it's written down, it's just a dream. Um, you're just thinking about it, but there's no plan for moving forward. Um, it will help you um, give yourself direction um, by setting some goals and making a plan to reach those goals, uh, finding out how much money uh, you need to make and how you're going to make it. Um, it'll help you determine your audience or who are gonna be your customers um, and how to market to them. And then um, if you're going further uh, beyond the usual, you know, just selling your work uh, and you're gonna apply for a business loan or grants, um, maybe you need a loan to build your studio, anything like that, um, they may want to see a more detailed uh, business plan, which we'll go over that um, quickly at the end, um, what, what something like that will need in addition to kind of what we're talking about. Um, Disclaimer, uh, this workshop will provide general guidelines for adapting a business plan to an artist's needs. I'm an artist, I'm not a lawyer, I'm, I'm not a um, accountant. Um, so please don't take this as uh, actual legal or financial advice. Um, please seek uh, advice from a professional um, if you're gonna make any major decisions. Let's see. All right, so again, why do artists need a business plan? Um, if you're trying to make money by selling your work, uh, you're a business. Um, there's, again, there's other topics, but you know, as soon as you're making money from what you're doing, you're considered a business. Um, to be a successful business, uh, you need to make a plan and take, uh, that will take your ideas and turn them into profitable actions. Um, and I will have these slides too. I will get them posted um, 
after the workshop. So if you're feverishly taking notes, don't worry about it. I will um, get these posted afterwards. Um, yes, using the uh, making the plan, and then it can be used to give you personal insight and direction, um, or it can be used to help you gain financing. And that could be loans, a loan from a bank, a grant, um, investors for a specific project. And it also helps you get stakeholders, which is things like a gallery, um, publishers, an agent. Um, and it can also help you get support through your family and friends if they know what you are trying to do. All right, a well-prepared business plan does several critical things for you. And this is actually, I, I, I did the source down here. Um, Springboard for the Arts is actually a great resource um, if you've never seen them before. Um, it is a uh, arts nonprofit in um, actually Minnesota, um, but they have a lot of amazing, great resources that I recommend checking out and they are all free. Um, but anyway, so uh, business plan helps you determine the feasibility of your business idea. Is it even possible? Um, when you get down to the details. It identifies many key decisions that you will have to make. Um, so planning those out. Uh, it helps you identify, connect, and organize critical information. So just making a plan and kind of organizing it. And then it helps you make informed decisions. So once you kind of know more information um, about some of the things we're going to look into, it'll help you decide if that's really the way that you want to move forward. Okay, and again, for people just joining, if I pause, I'm letting people into the room because I'm swinging this on my own tonight. So, all right, so the first part uh, that we're gonna focus on is actually your business goals and objectives. Um, and again, I know it's so weird for us artists to think about ourselves as a business, but, but that's what we are. Um, so first, we're gonna determine our goals. Um, and it's easiest to do this by categorizing some of them. Um, so what are the goals for your art and thus your business? Um, so category, categorizing them into things like this, like your art specifically, what is it that you want to make? Um, your markets, are you trying to get your work into a gallery to be able to be sold? Um, are you trying to get into multiple galleries? Are you trying to sell it yourself? Are you trying to look at something completely different? Um, but just setting goals for where you want your work to be um, and uh, your financial situation. How much money are you trying to make? Are you just trying to be somewhat hobbyist and cover your expenses of your materials and somewhat your time? Um, or are you trying to do this to cover everything, uh, your personal expenses as well? And we'll kind of talk about both of those as we go through this. Um, your facilities might be another one. Um, are you working out of your dining room? Do you want to change that? Do you want to open your own studio or gallery? Um, so those are just some very basic uh, categories um, to start with, but, uh, you know, setting goals for various things within your business um, will help you kind of figure out which directions to take. Next, uh, once you know your goals, you're gonna start to create your business objectives. And so your objectives, take your goals and give them quantified or measurable actions. Um, and we'll get more to, uh, into that on the next slide, but I am sure if anybody has ever looked at goal setting uh, materials, you're gonna see this SMART. Um, and it's just a way of goal setting um, and, and in this case, the objectives. Um, so making sure your objectives are specific, um, that there's details to them, they're measurable, they're attainable, um, they're relevant or realistic, so relevant to what you're trying to do and realistic that you can actually do them, and then they have a time frame to them. All right, so an example um, of so, or some examples of business objectives um, and kind of what I mean about being specific with them. Um, an example, I will be able to create and sell three paintings a month at $500 each to cover my overhead costs by the end of my first year. So that's saying how many paintings you wanna sell, what their price is gonna be, 
what that's going to cover and in the time frame that you want to do it. Um, and so you're creating goals that give you some give you specifics to shoot for. Um, you know, we'll get to this, but you might need to come back and change some of these and, and check them along the way. But, uh, you know, just having numbers to look at to begin with. Um, another example, uh, I will be represented by one local gallery by the end of this year, by two more galleries in the state by the end of next year, and two national galleries by the end of my third year. Um, so this is a more long range one that's giving you steps to achieve over a certain number of years um, that seem fairly um, attainable. And then um, I will find a studio or storefront space by the end of my second year that, that is within my budget. Now I didn't put specifics on that as far as numbers because studio spaces are ridiculous, especially around here as most people probably know, but um, We'll, we'll get to that on the next slide as well. But that is, that is another example. You know, you're gonna know what your own budget is um, as far as that goes. All right, timeline. So now that you have all of your objectives or at least some of them, you know, you don't have to necessarily wait till you have all of them to do this, um, but take all of your objectives and put them on a timeline. Um, make sure that it's realistic and that you'll be able to accomplish them. And you might, after you start putting them together, realize that you've put too much at one time and you might need to adjust it and that's fine. Um, so for an example, uh, if you want enough money to get your studio storefront by the end of the second year, how many paintings will you need to be selling by then to afford it? Is that reasonable and, a, and a, is that a reasonable and, a, and attainable objective? Um, so you know, kind of kind of looking through the whole plan and and figuring out if you need to move anything around, change some of the goals. Uh, this will just help give you a, a better idea of a full timeline. Um, you will need to revisit your goals and objectives often to keep yourself on track. Um, so it's a good idea to have them, um, you know, maybe you have them on the notes in your phone, maybe you've got them posted in your studio, uh, maybe you just have a reminder to check them once a month um, or every quarter uh, and see how you're doing and what you maybe need to do um, to continue to achieve them or if they need to be adjusted. Okay, the next fun topic. And if anybody has questions, you can either put them in the chat um, or unmute yourself and, and ask as well. Uh, like I said, I'm doing this myself. I do have the chat up, but uh, if I don't see something, let me know. Um, we're gonna move on to the ever fun topic of budgeting. Um, so now that we know kind of our goals, what do we need to budget um, to achieve those goals? And I mean, what is our spending and what is our, uh, what do we need to bring in? Um, so first uh, you need to figure out your expenses. Um, what are your monthly expenses? Are you trying to, and this is the major one, are you trying to cover both your business and personal expenses um, by, your, by selling your artwork or, or whatever you're doing with it? Um, so first you need to decide that. And maybe that is something that is on that timeline where that first year you're just trying to cover your business expenses. The next year you're trying to get a little bit of a profit. The third year you're trying to cover your personal expenses as well. So, you know, it, it, it might be a series of steps, um, but you need to think about um, what it is you're trying to do. Um, so personal expenses, I would hope all of us as adults um, know what our personal expenses are every month. Um, but I realize that a lot of people don't necessarily keep track of that. Um, I would recommend, especially if you are looking to, um, you know, make your, your art and your business your, your primary income, and those are gonna need to cover your personal expenses, you really need to know what those expenses are. Um, and so you can do that on a spreadsheet, you can do it on a piece of paper. There are amazing um, apps out there now that, um, you can set and they, they will track your expenses and kind of categorize them for you and give you reports. So 
Um, it's a lot easier than it used to be, but I mean, track everything, track your, your food, how much you eat out, um, your, your rent or your mortgage, um, just basically everything uh, that you spend on yourself personally or your family. Um, and then of course your business expenses, um, which might be a bunch of different things, but you know, some general topics are your, your materials uh, to make your work, your, your marketing, um, you know, you're, you have to pay for a website if you've got that. There might be um, some boosted posts you do in social media, um, all kinds of things. Uh, any fees that might be listing and processing if you are doing it online, um, selling work online. Um, application fees to shows, uh, booth fees for going to a market. Um, and gallery fees, like what, what does a gallery take if they, they sell your work? Um, you know, and then other things that you might have, including uh, rent, if you have any employees, um, if you have to pay for liability insurance, or if you, as a self-employed artist, are paying um, for your own health insurance. Um, again, not, not an accountant, but that is deductible. Um, so, but it is also an expense. So basically just trying to figure out what it is um, either monthly or yearly that your expenses are gonna be. Okay, don't forget taxes. So if you have never been self-employed before, um, you've only worked as an employee for a company, um, that company or business will takes takes taxes out of your paycheck and pays them for you. So you don't need to worry about it. But as an artist and a business owner, you're gonna to need to pay your own taxes. Um, you are gonna to need to set aside 20 to 35% of your income for taxes. Um, that is a very general guideline. Again, I would recommend contacting an accountant that could help you figure out what tax bracket you're in, and what kind of taxes you might need to be paying um, and what you might need to set aside. Um, but anyway, uh, paying those taxes, you're basically, you're paying your income taxes, um, which you know we pay no matter what, if we're working at a job um, or for ourselves. Um, and then if you become a self-employed artist with a business, um, there is a self-employment tax. And what that covers is uh, your, your FICA and Medicare. Um, which when you work for a company, they pay half of that for you. So that's, that's the bummer is, uh, when you're self-employed, you've got to pay all of it. But, um, a lot of, I just know a lot of folks that aren't aware of needing to pay taxes, um, the way that you do as a, a self-employed artist. Um, but yes, you can hire an accountant um, or there's a lot of information on the IRS's website to help you determine how much you should set aside and how to file your taxes. Um, there's also some really great resources, especially in Austin, um, if you are local, uh, one of those, or, or Texas, um, one of those is being Texas Accountants and Lawyers for the Arts, um, which is a uh, nonprofit of, uh, lawyers and accountants that basically volunteer uh, to specifically help artists. Um, and they put on a lot of workshops as well, um, but they can, they can get you to somebody who will especially understand the nuances of being an artist and those, those uh, business needs. So um, Foundation Communities is also a really great resource here in Austin. Um, they are a nonprofit and they do a bunch of diff different stuff, but uh, they can help you uh, with some financial advice and, and doing your taxes for sure. So, um, and, and certainly, uh, again, this is small business week. Um, and so the small business division can also, um, give you a lot of, if not direct information, they can point you in the right direction. All right. So now that you know, um, your expenses, um, how much do you need to make to cover those? And so you're gonna to wanna to look at your break-even point, um, which is the point obviously at which your sales equal your expenses. Um, again, it, you need to decide if that's gonna be just your business expenses or are you also covering your personal expenses? Um, 
And so then it's also to figure out how many units um, you need to sell to break even. Um, and for artists, you know, a unit is going to be a painting, a piece of pottery or jewelry. Maybe it is a service where you're giving a, a private lesson. Um, or maybe you're licensing a song or selling a, a, a poem to a publisher, um, any of those things you can consider a unit. Um, so let's look at what some examples are. Um, okay, I picked this because I'm a ceramic artist and it was easy. Um, <laughs> as a ceramic artist, um, your break-even point is not everyone, but obviously I'm just using it as an example. Your break-even point is $1,000 per month for your business expenses, um, which it might be studio rent and materials, marketing fees, might have some other things in there. So then you need to break it down. Um, let's say you sell a mug for $50. So to reach that break-even point, um, you're going to have to sell 200 mugs. While that might be possible, every month, is that going to be sustainable? Um, <laughs> I see somebody shaking their head. Yep. <laughs> so, um, you know, then, then think about some other things. Could you do a hundred mugs, but then maybe give 10 private lessons um, at a hundred dollars each um, or do a hundred mugs at $50 and then you sell four vases that are $150 and do four private lessons at a hundred dollars. So it's just how, what units are you putting together to hit that break even point? Um, and so it, it's just gonna help you kind of figure out realistically if you can make it happen and what you will need to do to do that. Um, all right. So then what about your personal expenses? Um, how much more uh, past your break even point do you need to pay yourself each month to cover your personal expenses? Um, and so basically that is an expense of your business is, you know, paying yourself out essentially. And how much are you going to, um, pay yourself per hour? Are you really even looking at it at that way at this point? Um, and again, pricing your work and paying yourself whole other topic that could be like a week long workshop. So, <laughs> um, so basically then you're going to take your business break even point and figure out how many more units you need to sell to cover also your personal expenses. Um, and then also think about, did you include some other things that you might need to, not just, not just paying your bills, you know, are you putting a little bit away in savings um, or adding some to a retirement plan? Because again, if you're not working for a business or a company, you don't automatically have a retirement plan. That's something you're gonna have to set up for yourself. All right, this is the really fun slide that has numbers and is difficult to understand in a little way, but um, I'm gonna try to break it down as, as best I can. And it, again, not an accountant, just trying to get it explained so that I know the artist brain um, will kind of understand. It'll help you kind of give you guidelines to maybe start figuring out how much you need. Um, so, I do this a little bit backwards from how you would normally think it is, but it's basically starting with how much you need and then figuring out how much you need to make to come back down to that. Um, so you need to know what you need for your net yearly income. Um, and that's what you need to pay your expenses after paying taxes. So that's, again, that's just your expenses. That's your, um, your business expenses and then your personal expenses if you're covering those as well. Um, and then you're going to find your gross yearly income. And so the gross yearly income is what you'll need to bring in before paying taxes in order to have enough net yearly income after paying taxes. So um, I'm going to give an example and then let me know if, if, if I'm way off and, and it's still difficult to understand. Um, so again, like I said, you can, you can consult like a, a accountant or tax person um, to help you figure out what your tax bracket is and how much you should maybe be setting aside for taxes. Uh, but let's say you know you have to pay 30% of your income uh, to cover your taxes. You're gonna multiply what you need, your, your net yearly income to cover your expenses by 1.3, so that's your 30%, that's, your that's adding your 30% onto your um, net yearly income. 
And then you'll get your gross yearly income by that number. So for example, if you need to make $50,000 to cover your personal and business expenses for the year, you'll need to bring in $65,000 through sales and services to cover everything. So that's the math, the $50,000 times 1.3, which is your, like I said, adding on your 30% um, to get 65,000. Um, because if you make 65,000 and then your tax 30%, that's gonna bring you down to that 50,000. Um, so hopefully that, that makes sense. It's kind of doing it again, like I said, in a backwards way, uh, but it, it also helps you if you know how much you need, you can tack back on to know how much you need to, to make to cover that. Okay, fun times. <laughs> so now that we know how much we need to make, how are we gonna make it? Um, so let's talk about ways you can diversify uh, your revenue and what you bring in. Okay, so your revenue streams. Um, you may need to think of additional ways to create revenue outside of selling your work uh, to reach your desired income goal. Um, kind of like, like we said, is, is 200 mugs a month sustainable? Not necessarily. Um, whereas, you know, may, maybe the three paintings is. So you just need to look at, again, like what your units are and whether it, it will, will work to do it that way. Uh, but some other things that you can do, um, like I said, there's the profits from sales or services. And like I said, services could be teaching a lesson. Um, like in my case, I, uh, I let people fire in my kiln um, and charge them a small fee. So that's a service. Um, but other ways that you can do it, uh, you can apply for grants. Um, you can license your art. Um, if it's visual art, you know, it could be... Um, put on a greeting card or you can make prints or it could be on a t-shirt, um, but it's basically getting paid for somebody to use uh, your image. Um, you, uh, crowdfunding. And so uh, again, perhaps you need to, um, again, build a studio or um, buy a piece of equipment um, and there's not really, you, you don't have the funds readily, readily available to do that. Um, you know, you can do a crowdfunding campaign where people pay you ahead of time. And then usually um, in exchange, they get uh, a piece of artwork sent to them later once you've got that piece of equipment or uh, musicians do it to help record their albums and then the people get a free advanced copy of the album. So there, there's different ways you can crowdfund. Again, another workshop in its entirety, um, which we do have a recording of that one as well. Um, memberships and subscriptions is kind of a new thing. Um, so if you've heard of uh, Patreon um, or there's, there's people I've seen doing it just off of their own website if they've got enough of a following, uh, but basically you ask people to pay a monthly membership uh, in exchange for either getting insider content, it might be a how-to video, it might be early access to a sale, um, and there can, there can be different membership levels and how much they pay and different benefits. Um, so I think that's kind of a neat one, especially because it gives you, um, it gives artists um, regular income to expect on a monthly basis. Um, you just obviously have to provide uh, things in exchange for that. Um, and then community funded projects, you know, look within your community if um, there's obviously public art projects, um, beautification projects. So there, there's all kinds of stuff out there, uh, but basically just finding different, different ways to bring in, um, bring in revenue. So then I thought this was pretty, a pretty neat tool. Um, the product service tree. And so it's a tool for working through how your creative output might generate income and who will consume it. Um, so in general, you're gonna look at your trunk um, and that might be your art in a broad sense. Um, like for me, example, that's pottery. Um, for a musician, it might, you know, their music. Um, so it, it's just your, your art form, essentially. Um, the branches are your income ideas. 
Um, maybe that's galleries um, or going to markets and festivals, teaching, teaching classes, um, whatever you think might bring in income. And then who might um, be your clients or consumers of those specific income ideas? And those are the leaves. So um, I thought it was a really interesting way to kind of like branch out and, and kind of visually figure that out. So, um, and given that, uh, moving on to who will be your clients and consumers, um, we're gonna move on to determining and expanding your audience. All right. Uh, so first you've got to define your product. Um, which is usually your art, um, but is it a good, um, which you know is a tangible, is it your painting, your jewelry, is it a performance, um, is it clothing, that sort of thing, or is it a service? Is it a workshop, a class? Um, are you fabricating something for somebody um, that they have, have commissioned or it's, it goes into a piece of their artwork? Um, so is it a good or a service? And are you selling a solution to a problem or are you selling an experience? And it might be both. And it might be both of both things too. Um, you know, a commission, you're, it's a service because somebody has contacted you and you're working with them. There's a lot of communication, but in the end it might result in a good. Um, are you selling a solution to a problem or an experience? Using handmade pottery is an experience, uh, but you're maybe providing a solution by they broke their favorite mug and you're helping replace it, you know? So, um, but doing all of, determining all these things is gonna help you figure out who your audience is for those things. All right, so who is going to buy your product or your service? Um, best thing to do is look at who's already buying your products or using your services. Um, if you do in-person sales, uh, pay attention to who's, who's buying. You can, can't tell everything by looks, but you can, you can usually tell some things um, by the look of a person. Uh, and then also uh, there's amazing tools online now for uh, the, the analytics of your social media, or if you are doing online sales, a lot of times you can gather where do those people live? What age group are they from? Um, basically, what are their demographics? Um, you may not be able to get everything, but it'll give you an idea of who are the people um, already buying your work. Um, and then because of that, determine how best to reach them. Um, and then who else do you think would be interested and want to buy your work based on that? Um, and that's your target market. That's your target market, your target audience that you want to expand to. All right, so how can you reach and expand to your target market? Um, these are just a few uh, examples, uh, but a good one is to, and usually free, is to find online communities um, with related interest to your products or your art form or whatever. Um, there are all kinds of Facebook groups uh, that you can search and join. Um, if you do Facebook, you can follow and, and use hashtags. Um, if you do social media like um, Instagram or, or Twitter, um, you can look for online uh, forums where people are posting about, um, about uh, the type of artwork or um, processes. Uh, you can also look for online publications to submit to, um, you know, and that might be uh, established ones that are actually already publications in your, your field, your medium, um, or it might be blogs. It might, if you do performances, maybe it is um, a local blog that talks about what's going on for the weekend and you can ask them to feature, feature your performance um, or it's a blog putting together Mother's Day gift suggestions, you know, sub submitting um, and reaching out to those. So basically find those and then sub submit content to those communities. Um, I'm not saying spam them with uh, direct product advertisement. Um, you'll probably get turned away a lot of times, 
um, but just engaging with them, letting them know um, that you're there and they'll inevitably start to look at um, your social media or your website. Um, you can offer comments. Um, you could post tutorials on how you make your work that, that attracts a lot of people. I know in my field of ceramics, some of the biggest consumers of ceramics are ceramic artists. So, you know, getting into those communities and communicating, letting them know that you're there. Um, or similar communities. Maybe, maybe as a ceramic artist, I've only made functional pots for humans, but maybe I start making dog dishes and I start finding animal groups, local animal groups. Um, anyway, uh, submit work to calls for entry. Um, this is a good way to reach new audiences. Um, it could be a call for entry for a themed gallery exhibition, um, a public art call, uh, a call for a publication, uh, whether that's a, a written piece um, or for images. Um, could, if you're a musician, it could be a venue calling for musicians for an event, those types of things. Um, and basically, it's up to you. It's any way to show your work and gain followers who have not had exposure to your work before, uh, but you know that might be interested. However, <laughs> on the topic of exposure, um, it can be a tough topic um, and a touchy topic, um, but it's really up to you um, to know how much you want to put into it for what you get out of it. And what do I mean by exposure? Um, it can mean a huge range of things uh, in your control or out of your control. Um, so for example, a company using your art or asking you to perform for free, um, it depends what it is and what you're getting out of it. Um, I am not a huge fan of especially a large national company asking to use artists work for free. Um, they've got budget to, to pay people. You should probably ask to get paid, um, but it really is up to you. Um, a different route, paying for an online advertisement or boost. Obviously you have complete control over that, at least as far as how much money you're spending for exposure. Um, you of course can't control everything with uh, algorithms and, and who they're showing it to, but you have some control. Um, and paying attention to what, what are the analytics that come out of it afterwards? Was it worth uh, boosting a online posting for um, a sale that you're having? Uh, did, it, did you get more people that showed up? Um, <clears throat> a typical one is a gallery taking a percentage of your sales. Um, you know, and is that, you know, if you're gonna work with galleries, that's going to be a reality. Um, it's just how it works. That's how they make their money. Um, but are they doing the work that they should be uh, for the per percentage that they're taking? You know, are they promoting you? Are they actually selling the work? Um, so all of that. Um, let's see here, a couple of questions. Should you copyright your art if you were a painter, for example? So again, I'm not a lawyer. Um, I know that uh, Texas Accountants and Lawyers for the Arts, Tala, um, has done several copyright um, workshops and they might have those either on their YouTube channel, but they would also be a great resource to just ask. Um, I know there, there is a legal way to copyright your work, but there is also just ways of documenting it so that, you know, there's, it's known that it was created by you on this date, you know, um, and so it, it can back you up later, but again, not, not a lawyer. Um, what is a seller's permit and do artists need to get it? Um, I'm not sure what you necessarily mean by seller's permit, um, but if you are, you definitely need to get a sales tax permit um, if you are selling, and that is in any state that you are selling, um, which is not a hard, hard thing to do. Um, and if you have questions, the comptroller's office, especially here in Texas, is super super good about answering, at least usually. Um, let's see here. And as far as like um, 
getting like a DBA or which is doing business as registering yourself as a, is as a business again, um, look into it, but yes, you, it's, it's a good idea to do that. Um, and again, you can find that on various, um, websites or Tala can help, or, um, usually it's on the County website. If you just Google it, um, let's see here. Cover Do I recommend copywriting? Um, again, I don't know how much it costs, I think is what you're asking um, to do that. And then it, it's really up to you. I, I've known people that have run into copyright issues uh, with somebody you know, producing their work or likenesses of their work um, that have had to deal with it afterwards. Um, do you know a good company that licenses images? Um, Personally, as a ceramic artist, I don't. Um, if anybody has any recommendations on that, you can certainly put it in the chat. Yes, be sure to pay sales taxes on time. Yes, um, especially in the state of Texas, uh, it is just a flat fee for not paying on time. Um, whereas previously where I've lived, it was a percentage of your sales. So if you didn't sell anything that quarter, it was a percentage of zero. So, but that's not how Texas works. But um, I do know with Texas, uh, you can ask them if they signed you up quarterly, you can ask to be put yearly instead um, if you don't make a ton of regular sales. Um, and then uh, if you are not doing, doing it anymore or if you only needed it for a couple of shows, you can ask, it, uh, ask them to cancel it. But you can always have it reinstated with the same tax uh, number. Uh, sources for grants, um, City of Austin, is going to be the cultural arts division, um, but there are also um, obviously uh, uh, private grants and state grants. Um, you can generally, again, just kind of Google where you live and um, artist grants, a lot of stuff will come up. Um, let's see here collect sales tax for lessons. Um, as far as I know, a lesson is a service and you don't collect uh, sales tax on services. Um, at what point of sales do we need to start reporting um, as far as uh, uh, income tax? Uh, immediately. If you, if you are, and I, I know this from workshops we've done with Tala about um, doing your taxes, um, as soon as you are intending to make money off of your work, you are a business and you need to report it. Um, it there are numbers in there as far as, um, and I don't know what they currently are, but as to whether you need to pay the self-employment tax. If it wasn't very much, then, um, then it's, uh, sometimes you're not charged the self-employment tax. It's, it's considered a hobby instead. Um, sources for analytics is another question. Um, I usually just pull them from um, whatever platform I'm using. Um, if you are signed up as a business on Facebook or Instagram, not, not a personal account, um, you'll be able to access those analytics. Um, and that's where a lot of them come from. And then if you're selling through Etsy or you have your own Square website and you're selling, you can generally go in. Um, I'm not exactly sure where all of them and I'm, are, all of them are at, but um, usually you can, can figure out where those analytics are. Okay. Some good questions. All right, and so then once you have um, figured out who your customers are and maybe they finally in your audience and maybe they've even bought a piece of work from you, um, how do you retain them? Um, keep track of your customers and keep them informed. Um, again, you can do this by uh, collecting emails, um, having them follow you on social media, um, but it's, and then is it easy for, for someone to find you and purchase your work, especially purchasing it again? Did you give them a business card when you sold them a piece at a sale or did you throw a business card in with the um, 
the piece that they bought online that you shipped to them. Maybe you even threw in a 20% off your next purchase. You know, you need to determine if that's something that you are comfortable doing, but those are ways that you can continue to retain your customers and keep them buying more. Um, and then create a plan for staying in touch with your established customers. So once they have followed you on social media or signed up for your mailing list, um, you can post regularly so that they know what you're up to. Um, and then with a mailing list, uh, you can send updates um, on maybe what you're offering, if you've got an event coming up, uh, maybe you're getting ready to post new items to your website for sale. Um, but be careful about how often you're doing this. We all know how many emails we get every day and how many we don't look at. Um, and so, you know, there's also that nice little unsubscribe button on emails where if they're annoyed by enough of it, they're going to stop following you. Um, all right. There's a couple questions here. Oh, somebody's recommending um, a website for, for putting together your, your ideas and your plan. That's great. Um, okay. So now that we have worked through and figured out all of these things, now we need to actually write our business plan. And then maybe how are you going to use it after that? Okay, so it's going to depend how you write it on who you're writing it for. As artists, especially maybe sole proprietor, self-employed artists, it might just be for us. If all we're doing is just trying to sell our work, we're not trying to get investors, it might just be for ourselves. Um, and in that case, um, you might just use it for the purposes of reaching your goals and holding yourself accountable. So in that vein, it can be in whatever format you want it to be, what, what works for you. Um, but maybe setting up a schedule, like I said, to check those goals and see where you're at on them, hold, just ways to hold yourself um, accountable. Um, but if you are going to use it to get an investor, um, it's gonna be a lot more detailed. Uh, so also think about it as, you are handing it over without being able to tell anybody verbally anything. Um, so you're gonna need to put it together to be able to tell a story about your business and what you're trying to do, because you may not be able, they may not look at anything more than, um, than what you've given them in either paper or digital written format. Um, anyway, there are many examples and outlines uh, for creating these types of business plans, um, and you can find them online um, and adjust them to fit an artist. You can even find examples of artist business plans, amazingly. Um, and they could include, so these next, <laughs> these next few slides are really kind of heavy and intimidating, um, but I, I wanna say that it is that it is they could include it doesn't necessarily need to have all of these things it again depends on exactly who you're writing it for but it may not be a bad idea to to pull some of this and just kind of know it for your for yourself as well okay so kind of the easy straightforward ones so if you're actually putting together a business plan you're going to present to somebody um, you're going to want a cover page um, and that's going to be fairly self-explanatory going to be your business name and details um, as far as where is it at, how do you reach it, um, and then your contact information um, as the owner, your, your name and, and contact information. Um, it also should have a table of contents because it's actually going to have enough stuff uh, to kind of need to know where everything is, um, and it gives someone quick reference to what your plan includes and where they can find it. Um, an executive summary is a fancy term for a quick summary of your plan, um, including your goals and objectives um, and the monetary amount uh, you're looking for if you're applying for a, uh, a loan or a grant. Um, and I say quick, as far as there's gonna be other documents in this that go into more detail. So it, it is really is a summary um, that you're kind of putting together that somebody can read up front before they get into the nitty gritty. <clears throat> um, and then your company description, uh, a brief history about what you do, 
uh, as an artist or if you have already kind of started your your business um, some history about that maybe you maybe you own an, a studio space where other artists work out of and you're you're looking for money to expand it um, and so history of how you got there and then your future plans and goals uh, for the business okay these are kind of the scary ones um, an industry analysis, which sounds scary, but like, let's say you are a uh, animator and um, you want to strike out on your own and maybe have a couple employees working with you. Um, so what does your industry look like? Is it growing? Is it changing? Um, and that could be, you know, are, is there enough work that the world needs another animation studio? Um, probably. Uh, how is it changing? Uh, are you going to have people work from home? That's something that's obviously changing. Um, so including those things about, about the industry. Um, and then, like I said, the size of the market, does it need, a, does the market need another, uh, is the work there? Do they need another animation studio? Um, your products and services is fairly straightforward. That's not so scary. Um, but what, what are some of the products you're going to offer? Um, what are their prices um, or, their, or the services? Uh, and how are you going to distribute those? Um, if, it's, if it is your products, are you going to, again, do a, do a gallery, sell online, um, go to festivals? Uh, if it's services, how are you going to get people to come into your, your business or go out to those businesses? Um, and then uh, a market analysis, which when you've gone through determining your audience is gonna help you. Um, who are your customers and why are they gonna buy your product? How are you gonna reach them? Um, and then who is your competition and why will your customers come to you? What are you offering that uh, competitors are not? Or what sets you apart from them? Um, management and organization, uh, who's managing the business and what experience do they have? Uh, so if it's, if it's you as a sole proprietor, what, what experience do you have with any other type of business? Um, or what, what work history do you have that's going to apply to this? Um, and then if you are a sole proprietor, especially if, is there any other advisors um, that you have that you might list, which might be if you have a lawyer, uh, that you're working with, um, or a, an accountant, an insurance agent, uh, a leasing officer, um, who are some of the, the people handling the aspects of your business. So those aren't as scary as they kind of look. Um, and then an operational plan. Um, how will you produce and deliver your products or services? Um, how will you sell it? Will you have employees? Um, how are you going to get your equipment and who are going to be your suppliers? And then even though it's a bummer, um, you know, including an exit strategy, um, how are you going to get out of this business if it ends up not working? Um, selling off assets or, or whatever that might include. Um, a financial plan and projections. Um, so that goes to some of those goals that we were talking about or in, in setting objectives. Um, the numbers that cor correspond to the plan, um, including your startup expenses, um, what, you, um, what, do you, what you expect the business to make um, in the coming years. Um, a financial history, if you have, if your business already exists um, and you have some sort of financial history with it, include that. Um, and then these next two things um, are just forms, profit and loss projection and a projected balance sheet. Um, and you can, they're not, they're not as scary as they sound. Um, and you can, you can find it, examples online um, of what those forms look like and how to fill them out. Um, and then a financing proposal. If you, if you're, if you're doing this to try to get financing from somebody, what's your proposal for it? Um, how do, you plan, how do you plan to obtain the amount required? Um, is, it, is it through a loan, specifically through who you're giving this to? Um, do you have some existing funds that you're gonna contribute? Um, 
uh, what collateral do you have that, that can help cover some of the expenses if they're not made? Um, and then finally, uh, any supporting documents. Um, so anything else you think that is um, important for um, whoever you're giving this to, to see. Um, and again, that, that might be your owner or if maybe you have a, a manager or a agent or something, um, those resumes. Um, if you have a, a letter of reference um, might be helpful. If you've already secured a lease or permits or licenses um, that you might need in your business, um, including those um, and any other uh, legal documents. Okay, so you can do it. <laughs> um, I promise you can. Uh, so even though those actually writing a formal business plan is maybe a little overwhelming um, and seem pretty daunting, um, if you really are think you're, think you're gonna have a problem doing it, um, you don't have to do it alone. Uh, you might consider hi hiring a professional uh, to help you. Um, and some of those uh, could be, uh, there is such a thing as, a, as artist coaches. Um, and I know there's some here in Austin that will help you um, through that process. Uh, if you have a financial planner or a business planner that you know or can find, again, I, I'm sure um, there are ones in Austin um, that specialize in artists. Um, or if you're not wanting to do that, are there some online business classes you can take? Um, or, or even again, looking through examples can be so helpful um, in everything an artist does, um, not, just, not just this. So, uh, let's see here, just checking the comments. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I will have the recording and slides put up in the next day or two. And I'll send an email out to everyone um, with links. So if you registered through Eventbrite, I have your email. Um, let's see here. We're almost done, I promise. We're going to be a little done a little early, but it's really heavy content. So yay, and it's nice out. So um, so can you do it? Of course you can. Um, so when you're finished, um, your plan should clearly identify your goals and expectations you have for your art, which is your business. Um, and so it's a good idea to review your plan regularly, like I mentioned before, um, to help keep yourself on track to meeting your goals, um, or you may need to make some adjustments um, to your plans as strategies change or as you kind of figure out what works and what doesn't. Um, and that's perfectly fine. Um, but yes, you can do it because you made a plan. Um, okay, I am going to, I'll put, because I know people came in later, um, this is our website for the Artist Resource Center, uh, which has other past workshop content and recordings on it. Um, and there is also a link there for a quick survey that I would appreciate everyone taking if they have a moment. Um, again, we get city funding to do a lot of this. And so giving them feedback that we're doing a good job, you know, helps us continue to get that. Um, so again, Artist Resource Center, uh, we do more than just these workshops. There's other things you can check out as well um, and opportunities for artists. We also have a Facebook group, um, Artist, Re Artist Resource Center at Doherty Art Center, um, which there's a link on this Artist Resource Center website uh, to join the Facebook group. And we, we post opportunities, not just from the city, but um, mostly local Texas opportunities, um, but we post opportunities to that pretty often. Um, so yes, if um, anybody has any last minute questions, um, please feel free to put them in the chat. I will hang out for a few, few more minutes. I really appreciate everybody coming out tonight. Um, I know the weather is getting great and it's hard to sit through one more Zoom thing every day. So um, I appreciate everyone. And uh, again, I'll hang around a few minutes, but uh, have a good night.